Hello students. We are going to do an experiment on Newton's second law of motion. I will explain briefly the theory and method of this experiment, and later I will explain how to do the experiment. Let's start from the second law. We have been familiar with this equation. For a one-dimensional motion, we can write this law as the equation. This is the first equation in your lab direction. In short, for an object under consideration, the net force acting on the object is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. Now, we apply this equation to the motion of a system as shown in the figure. We want to use this motion to measure the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. The system consists of a mass capital M and a smaller hanging mass M. The two are connected with a thin rope passing over a pulley. We assume that there is no friction between the mass capital M and the horizontal floor, and the pulley is also frictionless. Initially, the system is at rest. Now if we release the system, the two objects will move in such directions, one in a horizontal direction and the other one in a vertically downward direction. The two objects have the same magnitude of acceleration. For this motion, we can apply the second law to the motion of the two masses. <clears throat> For the first mass, the only force is the string tension T. So the equation of motion for the mass capital M can be written as that equation, which is equation in your book. Similarly, when applying the second law to the smaller hanging mass M, the equation of motion is written as the third equation. On the left hand side, the forces are the weight and the string tension. The object moves in the downward direction, so we write the net force as mg minus t. From the second and the third equations, we can find a relation for the acceleration A of the system as that equation. The right hand side equals the constant g multiplied by the quantity in the brackets, which is the ratio of smaller m divided by capital M plus lower m. Now you can see that it is the relation between the quantity A and the quantity in the brackets. Suppose we use a fixed value of capital M. And we use a set of different values of lower m. And for each value of lower m used, we measure the corresponding acceleration. After having done all the measurements, you will obtain a data set of the brackets of mass ratios and the acceleration a. So you can use the data to plot the graph between a and the brackets of mass ratios. For example, we may use five different values of lower m, and each m we measure the corresponding acceleration a. Your plot contains five points, similar to the one shown on the board. Then we can try to fit the result with a straight line. Because 
our experimental model, equation 4, suggests that the straight line passes the origin. So the best straight line that you draw should be drawn such that it passes the origin. Now from the line, you choose two points. Any two points on the line, like those two red points, then you calculate the slope of the line. The slope is the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. This is the slope that you obtained from the results of your experiment. <laughs> the meaning of this slope is the measured value of the gravitational acceleration g from your experiment. This is because the straight line you obtain corresponds to the equation. Then the slope of the line is to be interpreted as the value of g in that equation. So this is the method that we applied the second law to the motion of the system in order to determine the value of g. You may compare the obtained value of g with the standard accepted g value. The difference in value should not be very large. You can calculate the percentage difference of your value from the standard value. If it turns out that the percentage difference is small, then you may conclude that the Newton's second law of motion is true. I'd like to spend a few minutes to summarize the method of this experiment. We let the object of mass capital M moves from rest at point 1 to point 2. Position 1 is at the position x naught. The mass capital M moves a distance of 70 centimeters from pi 1 to pi 2. We use the hanging mass M of 4 to 5 different values. For each value of the hanging mass, we must measure the corresponding acceleration A of the system. First, we have to measure the speeds at point 1 and 2. The speed at point 1, let's call VI, is 0 because it starts from rest. Next, we measure the speed at point 2, let's call VF. We use the definition of the acceleration, which is VF minus VI divided by delta T. Delta T is the time the object moves from the initial point to the final point. So we can determine the acceleration A. And finally, when you obtain the data set of five values of mass ratios and five values of the acceleration A, you then plot the graph and calculate the slope of the fitted straight line. The slope obtained is the value of the gravitational g that we want to determine.